Philip Game Sir Philip Wolcott Game, 30 March 1876, 4 February 1961, was a British Royal Air Force commander, who later served as Governor of New South Wales and Commissioner of Police of the Metropolis, London. Born in Surrey in 1876, Game was educated at Charterhouse School and entered the military at Royal Military Academy Woolwich, gaining his commission in 1895. Serving with the Royal Artillery, Game saw action in the Second Boer War and the First World War. After serving with distinction and bravery, Game transferred to the Royal Flying Corps in early 1916, serving as General Trenchard's Chief Staff Officer. Finishing the war as an acting Major General, Game remained in the Royal Air Force after the close of hostilities. Notably, he served as Air Officer Commanding RAF India and Air Member for Personnel. He retired from the military in 1929, having reached the rank of Air Vice Marshal. In March 1930, Game was appointed Governor of New South Wales, serving during a time of political instability and coming into conflict with the NSW Labour government over attempts to abolish the New South Wales Legislative Council. Game dismissed the government of Premier Jack Lang in May 1932. Ending his term in January 1935, Game returned to Britain and was appointed Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police in London. He held it during the tumultuous 1930s, the 1936 abdication crisis, and the Second World War, before retiring at the end of the war in 1945. Between 1937 and 1949, he resided at Langham House, Ham Common, Surrey, and was vicar's warden at St. Andrew's Church. Retiring with his wife Gwendoline to his home in Kent, Game died in February 1961, aged 84. Early Life and Career Game was born in Streatham, Surrey, on 30 March 1876 to George Beale Game, a merchant from Broadway, Worcestershire, and his wife Clara Vincent. Before entering the Army, he was educated at Charterhouse School. Following officer training at the Royal Military Academy Woolwich, Game was commissioned as a second lieutenant on 2 November 1895 into the Royal Artillery. Promoted to lieutenant on 2 November 1898 and further promoted to captain on 3 June 1901, he served in the Second Boer War and was mentioned in dispatches including the final dispatch by Lord Kitchener dated 23 June 1902. As a young artillery captain, he was made officer in charge of the gun carriage bearing the coffin of Queen Victoria at her funeral in February 1901. In July 1902, he was appointed divisional adjutant of the Roman 9 Division Royal Field Artillery, stationed at Middleburg, Cape Colony. Following brief postings in India and Ireland, Game attended the Staff College, Camberley, in 1910, and was posted as a General Service Officer GSO at the War Office. He later won the Royal United Services Institute Gold Medal Essay. On 11 August 1908, he married Gwendolyn Hughes Jibb, the daughter of Francis Hughes Jibb of Dorset, and was promoted as a major on 15 February 1912. Following the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, Game served on the front in France, including at the Battle of Neuve Chapel. In the war, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Order, the Legion of Honor and the Order of the Crown of Italy, and was five times mentioned in dispatches. In early 1916, Game transferred to the Royal Flying Corps as a result of Hugh Trenchard's request for an experienced staff officer to serve in his headquarters. Game transferred to the Royal Air Force on its creation in 1918. At the end of the war, Game continued to work under Trenchard, but as director of training and organization in the RAF. In 1922, he was promoted to the rank of Air Vice Marshal and appointed Air Officer Commanding RAF India. The next year, he took up the post of Air Member for Personnel and was appointed as a Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath KCB a year later. Game retired suddenly on 1 January 1929, at the age of 52, allegedly owing to the rumors of his being appointed Chief of the Air Staff. On 1 March 1929, 
He was appointed a Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the British Empire in the Military Division GB. Governor of New South Wales, Wales. At the height of the Great Depression, Gain was appointed Governor of New South Wales in March 1930. He arrived in Sydney with his family in May 1930. On 30 June 1930, Gain was appointed by King George V, a Knight of Grace of the Venerable Order of St. John K. St. J. At the October 1930 state elections, the Bavin Nationalist government was defeated, and the Labour Party leader, Jack Lang, became Premier. Legislative Council Abolition Lang's previous term of office from 1925 to 1927 had brought him into conflict with Gaines' predecessor, Sir Dudley de Chair, over the proposed appointment of additional members to the Legislative Council in order to enable the abolition of the House, using the same techniques used to abolish the Queensland Legislative Council in 1920. His inability to gain control in the upper house obstructed Lang's legislative program, and in November 1930, claiming a mandate to abolish the council, Lang's Labour MLC put forward two bills, one to repeal Section 7 of the NSW Constitution, which prevented the abolition of the council without a referendum, the other to abolish the council. Lang requested the necessary additional appointments to pass the legislation from Gain. However, these requests were met with Gaines refusal. Believing that a referendum was necessary before the bills could become law, the Legislative Council permitted the bills to pass without a division on 10 December. Lang then announced his intention of presenting the bills for Gaines royal assent without a referendum. The following day, two members of the Legislative Council, Thomas Playfair and Arthur Trethowen, applied for and were granted an injunction preventing the President of the Council, Sir John Pedden, and the Ministers from presenting the bills to the Governor without having held a referendum. On 23 December, the Supreme Court of New South Wales, in the case of Trethowen v. Pedden, upheld the injunction and ordered the Government not to present for royal assent unless ratified by the electors in a referendum bills to abolish the Council. Lang immediately prepared an appeal to the High Court of Australia. In the case of Attorney General New South Wales v. Trethowen, the appeal was rejected by a majority of the court. Lang then appealed this decision to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council in London. On 31 May 1932, the Privy Council dismissed the government's appeal. Reflecting his status as a representative of the British government, Game at all times informed the Dominion's Office of Political Developments. In hard financial times, NSW soon came into conflict with the federal government as Lang's unorthodox financial policy opposed the economic orthodoxy advocated by Sir Otto Niemeyer, who was the main financial advisor to the federal Skull and Labour government and later the Lyons United Australia Party government. In July 1931, in a personal contribution towards economic recovery, Game notified Treasury to make a 25% deduction from his own monthly salary. Lang's government soon introduced legislation to cope with the economic problems the state was facing. Its first move was the Reduction of Interest Bill, which was intended to default on payments of overseas debts to British bondholders in an attempt to negotiate the interest rate. The Legislative Council prevented passage on 26 March 1931 by resolving that the bill be read again in six months' time. Lang again asked for additional members to force his legislation through. Came aware of the weight of opinion in the MacDonald government in London, the Scullin government in Canberra, and Sydney against the Lang administration's financial policies, refused. On 28 March, the Federal Labour Party expelled the New South Wales Labour Party for its opposition to the financial policy of the federal government. Despite various petitions and demands that he dismiss Lang, Game declined to act. Game later informed the Dominion's secretary, James Henry Thomas, on 29 March 1931, that he was not convinced that Lang would lose an election at this time. In March and June 1931, Lang repeatedly requested the necessary 80 appointments to swamp the council and prevent obstruction to his legislation. Game again refused, offering 21 appointments, 
which were enough to pass some of the legislation, but not the most controversial bills, including the bill to default on debts. Finally, in a compromise move with Lang on 19 November 1931, Game assented to 25 appointments, reasoning that it would not be possible to refuse Lang's requests until the Privy Council case was resolved. His telegram to the Dominion's secretary the next day explained further, I foresee if I refuse now, I shall most probably be placed in position before long where I should not be able to stop at 25 but should have sooner or later to give sufficient appointments to carry rejected legislation. Such numbers might give government a permanent majority to carry any. During this game questioned the result if Lang won the appeal to the Privy Council and the Legislative Council was abolished. Various correspondence between him and London confirms that had Lang succeeded, Game may have refused assent to the abolition bills, thereby making it the first time it had been withheld since 1708. This potential situation disappeared, however, with the judgment of the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council on 31 May 1932. The judgment dismissed the appeal by the Government of New South Wales. The bills repealing Section 7 and abolishing the Legislative Council could not therefore be presented to the Governor for assent until they had been passed in a referendum. Faced with other problems, Lang's plans for abolition ultimately failed. His successor as Premier Bertram Stevens later passed major reforms to replace the appointed Legislative Council via council elected by the whole Parliament. This was passed by referendum in 1933. Harbour Bridge opening In March 1932, in anticipation of the opening of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, when Lang decided that he would cut the ribbon and incurred the displeasure of the king, Game reassured the king that Lang had the right to cut the ribbon. Game and his family found much amusement in the controversy thrown up over the matter and the question of whether Game, as governor, should have a 17-gun salute. The far-right New Guard were nevertheless enraged over Lang's decision, culminating in Francis de Groot's cutting of the ribbon just before the scheduled official opening on 19 March 1932. The ribbon was hastily reattached and Lang opened the bridge with Game looking on, and he later gave a speech commemorating the occasion. Dismissal When the United Australia Party government of Joseph Lyons came to power in January 1932, it passed the Financial Agreement Enforcement Act, thereby forcing the NSW government to adhere to its debt commitments and to cut government spending. Lang appealed the decision to the High Court. When the court ruled that the law was valid, Lang ordered Treasury officials to withdraw all the state's funds from government bank accounts so that the federal government could not gain access to the money. Game advised Lang that in his view this action was illegal, and that if Lang did not reverse it he would dismiss the government. Lang stood firm and issued a leaflet in defiance of Game. Game then reluctantly decided to exercise his reserve powers and called Lang to Government House to dismiss him. However, Lang was not the first to hear of his dismissal. The pianist Isidore Goodman, who had been befriended by Sir Philip and Lady Game, was at Government House for dinner that night. There were a number of interruptions, and Goodman asked if he perhaps ought to leave. Game replied, No, that's not necessary. You see, I am about to dismiss the Premier. On 13 May 1932, Game dismissed Lang's government and appointed the UAP leader, Bertram Stevens, as Premier. Stevens formed a coalition with Michael Bruxner's Country Party and immediately called an election, at which Lang's NSW Labour Party was heavily defeated. This was the first case of an Australian government, with the confidence of the lower House of Parliament, being dismissed by a vice-regal representative, the second case being when Governor-General Sir John Kerr dismissed Go Whitlam's government on 11 November 1975. Game himself felt his decision was the right one, despite his personal liking of Lang. He wrote to his mother-in-law on 2 July 1932, still with all his faults of omission, and commission I had and still have a personal liking for Lang and a great deal of sympathy for his ideals and I did not at all relish being forced to dismiss him, but I felt faced with the alternative of doing so or reducing the job of governor all over the empire to
Lang himself, despite objecting to his dismissal, conceded that he too liked game regarding him as fair and polite, and having had good relations with him. End of term. During his governorship, Game was the patron of several organizations, including the District and Bush Nursing Associations and the Royal Agricultural Society of New South Wales, and was chief scout of the NSW Boy Scouts Association. Lady Game was president of the District and Bush Nursing Associations and the Girl Guides Association. The rest of his term was fairly uneventful and he returned to Britain following the expiration of his term on 15 January 1935. Before he left Sydney, he was appointed a Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George KCMG, on the recommendation of Premier Stevens, for his service as governor. In honor of their service to the state, Kuringai Municipal Council named a major road in Lindfield as Lady Game Drive and a nearby park as Sir Philip Game Reserve, in memory of Game's time as governor, a portrait was commissioned by public subscription and painted by R. G. Eves. It was then displayed at the National Art Gallery of New South Wales before being presented to the Government House. Metropolitan Police Commissioner Upon his return to Britain, Game served as Metropolitan Police Commissioner from 1935 until 1945. Not long after his appointment in November 1935, Game was responsible for the policing of the funeral of King George V, and subsequently the abdication crisis of King Edward Roman VIII and the 1937 coronation of King George VI. For his work in the 1937 coronation, Game was appointed by King George VI a Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order GCVL on 11 May 1937. Serving as commissioner during very tumultuous times, Game had to deal with fascist and communist demonstrations, a bombing campaign waged by the Irish Republican Army, and, during the Second World War, the organization of the police role in air raid precautions and relief. He dealt effectively with those problems and the consequent improvement in police morale was an important factor in the survival of London during the concentrated German air attack of 1940-41. In 1943, in an attempt to prevent burglaries, Game urged householders not to keep furs, adapting a verse from Chapter 9 of Ecclesiastes, saying, They are no doubt warmer, and look nicer than a tweed coat, but a live dog is better than a dead lion. Towards the end of his time as Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Game worked to establish the Sir Philip Game Boys Club, situated in Croydon, was opened in 1946. The club was officially opened on 19 July 1947 by the then Home Secretary, James Shooter Ed in the presence of Game. New premises were built and completed in 1964 and were officially opened on 8 May 1966 by the then Home Secretary, Sir Frank Soskis, in the presence of Lady Game, who unveiled a plaque in the memory of her husband. Game was the last senior armed forces officer to be appointed Metropolitan Police Commissioner, with the exception of his immediate successor, a senior civil servant. All successive commissioners have been career police officers. On 2 May 1945, Game was appointed a Knight Grand Cross GCB in the Civil Division of the Order of the Bath. He was already a Knight Commander in the Military Division of the same order, and he retired soon after on 1 June 1945. He died at his home, Blackenhall, Seven Oaks, Kent, on 4 February 1961, survived by his wife. His second son had been killed in action at Taranto, Italy, in 1943. 3. His daughter Rosemary recalled her childhood and her father's work in her 1989 memoir, Growing Up at Government House. Honors, 